Hi, we're on video five and we're coming to the end of our explanation about diphthongs. Um, we had the last combination remaining, which was the weak U combined with the strong A, E or O. Um, so here we've got U, A together making wa. Very common example, quando. Two syllable word, quando. U, E com combination we. Again, this is extremely common combination, and an example is puedo, puedo. Yeah, again, hear the e, the strong e. A lot of these things occur in, in verbs, and they're essential really to understanding how verbs should be properly pronounced, but we're not onto verbs today, we're just generally talking about pronunciation. Um, less common, but still exists, u, o, 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 and the example I've got here is mutuo. Mutual, which means mutual, mutual. Again, two syllable word beat on the first u, mutual, u being a combined single syllable sound. Um, so those are diphthongs. Now, something more to mention about these strong weak combinations is that they can be accompanied by an accent on one of the vowels, in which case it splits them up again into two syllables. I've got three examples of this. The word for country is país, país, country, um, nation, country. Um, if the accent wasn't on the E, it would be país, but the accent there splits into two syllables, país. Um, another example, I hope you don't suffer from this, well these are good and bad. If you get taken away by one, it's bad. If you get rescued by one, it's good, and that's the word grua, which means the pickup truck, grua. If the accent wasn't there, it would be gra, gra, or something, gra, gra. But we've got the accent on the u, making it grua, making it a two-syllable word. And if you're rescued by one of these, you might experience this um, emotion, alegria. Alegria means joy, alegria. If the accent wasn't there, it would be alegria, but it's alegria. Um, I've chosen this example, but actually there are a lot of shops, carniceria, uh, libreria, pescaderia, who have this ia combination with the accent on the e, unlike chemist farmacia, which doesn't have the accent on the, the final e. Um, now, we haven't talked about what happens when you have a strong vowel next to a strong vowel. These are separate syllables. They don't do the linking of the weak and strong making one syllable. They maintain uh, their distance, as it were, as separate syllables. Um, so I've put together a combination of each of these just to show you what happens. Um, when you're in a restaurant and you ask for the loo, one of the common words for this is aseo. Aseo actually means a washroom um, or a, a washing sort of process in general, but aseo, um, the beat is on the e. What have we got here? We've got a three-syllable word. Even though it's only four letters, it's three syllables. A, C, O. Because E, O are both strong vowels. Beat is on the last but one syllable. A, C, O. It's amazing how many people say A, C, O because they haven't understood the rhythm of the word. A, C, O. Three syllables, three strong vowels. Um, same thing happens if you put P in front. Pa, C, O. Um, putting those two letters the other way around, oe, it's not such a common combination, but it exists in the word for west, oeste, oeste, three syllable word, oeste. Now we've got the a, o combination, two strong vowels, a, o, and we've got a very nice word here, chaos, which in Spanish is caos, caos. Notice as well how the two vowels go straight to one to the other without any intervening y sound or anything. It's caos, caos. Hard one for, for the English ear. We tend to put sounds between vowels. Caos. It's, uh, let's look at the previous thing about rhythm. Ends in an S, beat on the last but one syllable, ca caos. Put those the other way, and I couldn't think of a better example than the equivalent of number 10 Downing Street in Spain, which is called Moncloa. Uh, if you listen to the news, you'll hear Moncloa mentioned quite a lot. It's where the uh, president of the country lives. Moncloa, beat on the O. Oa, oa. Um, and then we have the final 
permutation, which is the e and a together. And the two examples I've thought of are both verbs. One of them is plantear, plantear. Um, the ending is ar, and that's where the beat goes. But the e is also a, a, a strong, it's also a syllable, it's a strong vowel, so it's plantear. Plantear. It kind of means to propose. It's a funny word actually, difficult to, to uh, translate. But if you propose an idea, you plantear, for example. Um, let's put the a and the e the other way around. And we've got another verb, the verb to fall, caer, caer, caer. Again, the, be the beat is on the ending because it ends in a uh, uh, r, which is the consonant. Um, so the beat goes on the ending, it's rule two of the ones we did before. Um, but the, it's a two-syllable word. Root, ka, ending, er, kaer, kaer. And again, notice this lack of sound between the a and the e. It's not kaer, it's kaer, kaer. Um, which again is another illustration of the purity of the language. So I hope you're getting the idea of this. I know there's a lot of information. Uh, but you've got the advantage of being, being able to play it back. And the main thing I want to get across and what I'm trying to build up is the idea of specific rules governing sounds. The spelling system fitting the sounds. It's a phonetic language. It's giving us the gift of showing us how to pronounce. And if you just sort of let go of your uh, Englishy kind of ideas of what you think words look like and actually obey the rules, then you'll be able to pronounce them with confidence and that will in turn tune your ear to hear them. We've got one more video in this little series which hopefully as well will help us to understand what it is we find hard when we listen um, and how all these things actually come together in, in sentences where words are linked up together.